Rich is said he was going to go get coffee, but he's still here, unfortunately. And we can no, see I have that... plenty of coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> and as you can see, we are joined by. Uh, um, well, we're joined by by Teo. Uh, oh, there's Sean. <laughs> we're joined by the misdirected Mark folks today. We're joined by Teo's, uh, not misdirected Mark, D mastering dungeons on a misdirected Mark network. Teos and Sean, our dear friends. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Doing great. <laughs> Fantastic. Over to you, Sean. I let Teos speak for me because I have no idea how I'm doing. So if Teos says I'm doing fine, then I feel better. Uh, well, <laughs> based on listening to your podcast, I understand. <laughs> yes. uh, everyone, make sure to go check out our friends on the Misdirected Mark Network uh, and the Mastering Dungeons oh. podcast. So, uh, you know, the way we normally do the show is we usually start out, we talk a little bit about the gaming we did this week, a little bit of news, and then we dive into to an adventure writing session with our guests. What we're going to do is we're going to truncate that first bit, and we're going to spend a lot of time working on an adventure with our guests and with the chat. Um, you know, we, we figured let's do something special for Gen Con, and uh, we have these two amazing writers with us, so let's uh, let's take advantage of it. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> also... We're here at Gen Con, and we are a new show. So I want—I just want to talk Gen Con a little bit All right, before let's we talk get started with that. Is that cool? <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Um, let's see. So Gen Con this time had three different ways to participate, uh, which uh, in person, which of course here we are in our homes, um, online, and uh, and also the pop-ups. So uh, so I'm curious how your Gen Con experience has been so far this weekend. I, this is this I, I've watched a little bit today okay. and I watched a little bit yeah. yesterday, but not a whole lot. Um, just it's been a busy weekend. I'm hoping to catch some of the VODs later if they're available, that type of stuff. But how about you, Teo, Sean? Uh, I somehow managed to perfectly thread the needle between work that I had on the weekends and playing a game of Numenera, a game of Call of Cthulhu, Ooh. and uh, like two seminars that I attended, the 13th Age, Make a Monster, and then uh, the Saving Throw Show, Dom was telling us tips about how to stream. That was awesome. That's awesome. Um, wow. Oh, we got another follower. Woo! Um, I'm just... Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad Sorry. we've got online gaming down. Like, I just, yeah. like, it just, I, I wanted to go play some some Gen Con games, and my weekends have been totally wild. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm just excited to be doing it. <laughs> so, so what was this? What was the 13th Age Designing Monsters panel like? Yeah, yeah, like just well, in general. It, it's you would like it because it's and folks who are watching this would like it because it's a lot like this design and adventure thing. They start with a wacky concept, and that that what? usually it's done at Gen Con. And people throw out ideas and so it, it actually i started it off because i put in the idea either too many bones or too few <laughs> and it led to this crazy idea of a creature that lives in the plane of echo and has a reflection and so it can and it steals bones from bards it was wild and so they came up with all these different things as they designed the monster it was great and we I mean, have the minds of all kinds of twisted 13th age guys that are there you know rob hainsu mm -hmm. and all the all the team that works oh, on man. monster books so they were they were just going to it. It was great. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I, wow. I, I, I love Rob. Rob is hilarious. <laughs> I love Steel's bones from bards. Like that specific. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I track all the bards down. Just take all their bones. Okay. That was my nickname in college. Wild. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you stole all the bards' bones? Apparently. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you know. My nickname I was. I don't remember any of it, but that's what they were calling you the next day. So. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. That was my college experience too, not yeah. remembering any of it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Rich, I'm only now starting to understand the innuendo, and it's hurting. <laughs> In your end, um, Rich, I heard you went to a, a Gen Con pop up. What was that like? I did. Yeah, I was really excited that they were sending stuff out for game stores to demo, and so I went down to the, you know friendly local gaming store and played um, a couple different games, which was great. I lost a Splendor tournament. So there's Gen Con. Um, it yeah. really felt real right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, we were, we had, I think we had about 20 people down here playing different games. I, I played one about decorating a dungeon, kind of drafting tiles. And uh, it's pretty fun. Um, and uh, we were, we were trying to, you know, battle for for vocal space against our our local like Warhammer gamers who were also in the same room. So it wow. felt like it was as close to the experience as you could want. 
<laughs> War Warhammer <laughs> gamers have a presence. Uh, both, yeah, they have a presence audibly, <laughs> and yeah, it's great. Yeah. I love Warhammer. I I I, I wish I played more of it. <laughs> Um, um, but it, it was great because people would like they registered for five dollars and they got a lanyard and they got the little you know didn't have their name on it but a little Gen Con badge kind of oh nice um, you know so you'd look around and, and see all that it just it had enough flavor that you could imagine yeah okay Gen Con satellite yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And that was like it's a good right? first step yeah. it's a good first yeah. step for people too who may have never had the opportunity to go to Gen Con to at least. Mm -hmm. You know, feel feel a part of it. So you you as yeah. as horrible as this pandemic has been on so many levels, mm -hmm. uh, this need to uh, change the way you do things in order to expand and in order to entertain uh, has been uh, helpful to some. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, we uh, a little while ago we had the uh, um, Brian Patterson uh, D twenty monkey on the show, and we did a lot of talk about like mental health and, and during the pandemic and stuff like that. And I think I think having these pop ups, so long as people are staying safe, right, mm -hmm. and washing their hands and wearing their masks, I, th I think this is something we all kind of need. Like we all need mm -hmm. some human contact. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm I'm really appreciative that those things are happening. I just I haven't gotten to check it out myself. Yeah. One of the things that I wish I could have been in on at Gen Con this year was the final adventures coming out for the Moonshe Isles uh, campaign that Bald Man Games has done over the last two, three, four years. Yeah. Uh, so there have been wow. at least you know twenty trilogies of adventures, I think, mm -hmm. or nineteen or twenty uh, trilogies of adventures that they put out over the years, and that's a that's a huge amount of work. Um, Teos can tell you, you know, Ashes of Ath is putting out, you know, I mean, they're you know better than I do. You've done this yeah. several <laughs> times. I only, I only yeah. uh, dealt with it once, but, but I know that feeling of wrapping up a campaign is a really bittersweet feeling. And yeah. it was yeah. fun to see those and tweets I mean, from Eric Mengi talking about it, that. Mm -hmm. That's right. great. Yeah. I mean, Eric is an incredible storyteller and he's put together a great team, uh, writing all these adventures. So, yeah. uh, if you if you're not don't know what they are you know Moonshine Isles is a big part of the Forgotten Realms the first Forgotten Realms novel was set in the Moonshine Isles so you know it's got a place in nostalgia and it's also a great place to set adventures because it's got all the themes that you you want you got your fae side of things you've got giants you've got mm -hmm. you know twisted magic and druids and and all you know all of that all those great tropes uh, are there and Eric uh D is a huge fan of those novels so he really took everything he could from those novels to put them into the adventures um, so you know if even if you're not a fan of of those novels specifically they're still fun to play but if you are all the easter eggs in there that's awesome yeah i uh i got to play i haven't played nearly as much as ventures league as i've wanted to this year but i've played a few in the, the moonshade isles adventures since they've been in here over the past well you said it was like three years now right they've been in moonshade isles yeah. It's yeah. uh, it, it's it's really good. It's a lot of fun. I, it's, it's a region I haven't explored much in Forgotten Realms, so I love I love digging into new places. Right. But, uh, yeah, cool. I, what else you got, Rich? Ooh, um, let's see. Um, I mean, uh, one of the things that I always think about as kind of a a highlight of of Gen Con because I watch it from afar. I've only been I've only been to Gen Con one time. It's not, <laughs> you know. I'm a West Coaster, but um, I love the Ennies. I, I just think oh, it's yeah, a fun yeah. moment. I know if there have been Ennies deals in the past and, and whatever else, but it's kind of like a, a moment when, when people do tend to come together and talk about what is interesting this year. So I do like it. Um, it's my awards show. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really interested that the, the big winner this year from Renegade Games getting product of the year, best game and best rules was Alice is Missing. Um, have either of you, has anyone gotten the chance to play that one yet? I almost signed up for one, but I wasn't sure if the experience playing online would be weird to not be saying things in a game. Yeah. But maybe it would have even been more appropriate. Right. But at, at the last minute, I, I I was like, I don't know. Maybe I'll try it in person. So I have not. I, I've not tried it. I've heard amazing reviews. It looks yeah really interesting. I've Yeah, but I, I, I need to try it. I need to get together with some folks. Because I think I'm with you, Teos. Like, it, it, it does feel like there's a certain aspect of it. You need... You know, you need the body language that's, you know, that's, and that's right. missing a little bit in the online. 
Yeah, because you, you don't talk during this game, right? Is, is the yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Which I can't believe that's a product of the year is one where you're not talking, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you're communicating by by text or whatever else. Uh, it's just, yeah. Well, everybody really I'm, liked, I'm liked that movie. Uh, what what is it? Uh, don't don't make it. Don't speak. Don't make a noise. You know that horror movie. Oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> it's one I haven't seen yet, but yeah. No, no. Um, yeah, but I'm I'm really glad that I mean that we've got something so interesting and so so kind of different than the the D twenty kind of moment that got called out right there. It was very yeah. fun. Um, we were uh, we we talked to Eugene Marshall of Arcanist Press recently, yeah. who wrote Ancestry and Culture, and that got a couple silvers for best supplement and best uh, electronic book. So I was pretty excited to see that. Um, we talked to him a lot about kind of like the the change towards dealing with race and ancestry in in D D and D in general. So that was very cool. Speak of hey, the devil, is Eugene right there? <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, um, that's incredible. Yeah, we we had him on to talk about the book that I believe uh, won ancestries and yeah yeah. Yeah, Ancestry and or, yeah, Ancestry and Culture, absolutely, yeah. and that entire line of products, very cool. Yeah. Um, let's see, fan favorite publisher, and I think the the uh, folks who got the most awards overall was Free League Publishing for Alien and Nordic Horror. Okay. Um, yeah, and and, uh, and my and big surprise one, and yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's that's impressive. I think, and one of my favorite things of the Annies, where I kind of agree with you that the Annies can be really great is they can introduce people to new publishers, right? And, and help them yes. elevate a bit. So like Pelgrane Press a few years ago or many years mm -hmm. ago, sort of won mm -hmm. a bunch. And, and a lot of people didn't understand Pelgrane Press back then. And so that's sort of like, oh, okay, I need to take them seriously. And same thing with Free League. I think a lot of people know about them, but now it's like another level of mm -hmm. establishing. When you just sweep yeah. a bunch of awards, it, it kind of settles that they know what they're doing, right? They're making good stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah, something's going right over there. I should check yeah. that out. One, right? of the, one of the things that <laughs> I, I really enjoyed about the Ennies this year was um, the fact that like the big publishers didn't really toss anything in the ring. Um, it gives a, it, it gave a chance for a lot of the more indie developers, the smaller developers, like you were saying, Teos, to get that recognition that will hopefully catapult them into you know everyone's mind, like Renegade Games. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they were a winner right. um, six, five, six years yeah. ago. Yeah, so... Oh my gosh! Uh, my my biggest surprise from the Ennies. Biggest surprise! I'm ready. Uh, f winning four awards: Brancolonia Spaghetti Fantasy, uh, an Italian Kickstarter that launched or, or finished up in August, I think, very recent. Um, they got about a hundred thousand, and uh, and they four awards, both gold and silver, for this product that I had just barely heard of. Uh, and I'm kind of excited because that's also, I think, one of the first major like Italian. Uh, you know, times they've been in the awards at all, you know, like, yeah. I'm just, it's kind of cool to see that, uh, that international audience come in and uh, just run yeah. through. <laughs> it's like a soccer match, right? We have Italy versus Sweden. Right? I mean, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Teos, yeah. you, you've, have you, have you, have you visited any gaming stores in Italy? I know. Uh, I have, though I tend to go to the smaller towns when I'm there, like, you know, little Tuscan towns. And so they yeah. don't have much of anything. But uh, but I'm next time I visit, it's on my list to grab a copy of everything in Italian that, that 5e has because they do have those. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah. 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 But um, but yeah, you know, it's it's neat to go to any store in Europe it has its own slight differences that you kind of mm -hmm. go, oh, yeah, that's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last last time I went there, I was super into comics. That was my entire life. And so I uh, I went to a bunch of different comic stores and got, you know, they, they, they just have different comics there. You know, uh, we, we, we know about heavy metal, of course, over here in the States, but they have a bunch of them like that. And then they, a bunch of comics are just formatted in these like different shapes than your what you expect. And it's and I have a bunch of those laying around somewhere. It was, it was a great experience mm. checking out how your hobby translates in, in, in yeah. Europe, in the European market. So, yeah. wow. And they've, That's they've great. introduced a, a new convention or I don't know if it's a new convention, but wizards has put its, uh, power behind it, a convention called Luca, mm. uh, in, in Italy recently. And so they've traveled there. They've been running special events there and obviously COVID slowed everything down, but it'll be interesting to see if they continue that relationship. Yeah. So, Luca. so we're going to, we're going to do this panel at Luca next year. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's one of the biggest 
conventions in the world, that Luca convention, it's apparently enormous. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's one of those things yes. that you, you count it a certain way and then it's like the biggest, but I don't recall what the categorization is, but it, it's enormous either way you look at it. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Oh, wow. I, uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to going to some conventions again soon. It's, uh, well, I'm not super soon, but soonish, right? Like, I don't want to go this weekend, uh, you know, <laughs> because I have plans, but, you know, <laughs> maybe next weekend. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Soon enough. Well, very oh, cool. Man. Um, I think that's for me, that was, uh, those were the things I was looking at for the Ennies in particular. I don't know if anyone else had any, any big winners that they were really excited to see. Yeah, I didn't, well, I didn't see, um, yeah, yeah, well, I already mentioned that I didn't see the big ones, but I also didn't see a lot of, uh, uh, organized play showing up again this year. So I'm wondering if there just know, wasn't very much submitted or if they've done away with the category, which I know Teos fought for yeah. the years. So Teos has a story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh. yeah, I'll, I'll try to make it very brief. So I fought for this organized play category because back then the production values of organized play adventures were such that I was told by any people, you can't win. Like if you don't have decent layout and cover and things like that, like if it looks like a word document, you can't win. It's just not possible. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter how good the adventure is. You won't win. So I was like, well, what if we created a category? just for organized play adventures. And we've got, you know, Shadow on Missions, and we've got all these other ones, and Legend of the Five Rings, and all these things that existed back then. And a number of things have happened since then, as they slowly added this category. One was that various uh, organized play programs went away, mm -hmm. or were not in a place where they could submit because they were too busy. And production values went up to the point where I don't know that we actually need the category necessarily. And if we did, we'd want folks it's almost like the Ennies isn't suited to do it. Like they can't properly review it to really assess what is a good organized play thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, votes change just, or the, the judges change each year. So it's to the point where this year the, they named content programs instead of organized play programs in addition to AL. So it was essentially okay. like the version of the DMs Guild for Call of Cthulhu got oh, added. Wow. Yeah. And it's not organized play at all. And it won gold yeah. and silver for those adventures. They're not organized play adventures. And, and it, it was even funny that like, I'm on the Call of Cthulhu mailing list and getting their email that explained like, believe it or not, we're on the organized play category. We don't know why. Here's how to find us. So it's just, it's one of those things that like, because if it's, if, it's if it's a content program, then all of DM's Guild should be in that category, right? Right, so right. but it's in it just best electronic book. Yeah. Quite. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. well. Wow. I have learned a bit. Yeah, and you, Eugene Marshall in the chat said they had an organized play category still this year. Uh, both silver and gold were at Call of Cthulhu. So mm -hmm. mirroring exactly yeah, so what So those are said. those content provision programs rather than organized play programs. So I don't know. It's yeah. interesting. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, um, if you are checking right now, the any site was down for me all day. So <laughs> you'll have to yeah, find that was. news somewhere else. I think there is a, a recap on Ian World, of course which yeah. is strangely up. <laughs> <laughs> it is cool. strange that Ian World's up. Well, if Annie's is down, then I don't... <laughs> I didn't hack it to change the organized play program, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, cool. So, so well, something's think, happening. Yeah. Something hap is happening next week. On Thursday, in fact, yes. I believe. Thursday is when it's happening. It's super exciting. and Everybody here should be super excited about it. It is, in fact, my birthday. And so everyone oh, should come. Yeah. Whoa. It's my birthday <laughs> Thursday. That's it. That's all that's going on starting September 23rd, right? Nobody okay. else. I'm writing it on my calendar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I get oh that once yearly message that, oh, happy 65th birthday, which I think I hit missed both of you this year. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> it's been a weird year. <laughs> um. No, uh, that is going to be D&D &D Celebration. It is the 23rd through 26th. And uh, Rich, you wrote down there's going to be a musical? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is D&D &D Celebration this year is focused on, I believe, the wild beyond the witchlight, although there's a lot of Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons that's going to be chatted about as well, it looks like. Um, since this book comes out on the 21st, kind of as a lead up. And, and then, yes, holy cow, there's so many things going on. And the one I keep seeing on Twitter is the Circus of Sound, a D&D musical um, with, a <laughs> with a whole bunch of folks. I have no idea what it's going to be about. None, except 
you know, circus, so I'll be on the witch light. Yeah. Um, I was always sad that I never got to go see the uh, uh, the Pathfinder plays that kept happening up in, I think it was in Washington. It might have been in Oregon, um, where like uh, folks who were writing for for Pathfinder would would or they were going to create one of their adventures live on stage. It sounded amazing. I wanted to go. I'm going to check out this musical because <laughs> I want that sense of the theatric. You know, I yeah. want to see it um, and uh, and find out how in the world that looks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, that should be fun. Yeah. Do you guys do, um, you, do you guys have any celebration plans? I know you've been involved before, Teos, and but... I'm playing some games. Yeah. So, uh, nice. yeah. so you know, there's a whole organized play component that's uh, behind that. Um, mm -hmm. So if you go to that D&D &D celebration page, there's a whole play area and, and there's still some seats available for some events. A lot of it is sold out, but they've got the Wild Beyond the Witchlight preview uh, for the new AL season that'll start up mimic, you know, mirroring that uh, book. And um, they've got, you know, Ravenloft stuff, though. I think those are all sold out because it's mostly the Witchlight stuff. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to get other things, I think those are pretty hard to get. Um, yeah. I think there, there's some Moonshays or Red Wizards adventures as well, but again, all nice. sold out. So, but the, with the Witchlight, you can still get the preview. And I'm, I'm doing that and something else. Have you guys? Yeah, there's, there's two. There's two uh, Witchlight adventures. The first is a two-hour Prelude adventure, which I think includes character creation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if if you want to create characters that way, and then there's a four-hour multi-table epic adventure called the Witchlight Carnival that actually kicks off the uh, season and the, and the campaign. So. If you're you know into Adventures League or don't know what Adventures League is and want to check it out, though those are your two events right there. Yeah, Thanks. yeah, and the the five E intro adventures, at least you know whenever I started, were were fantastic, and I've 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 heard those intro adventures continue to be fantastic. So, uh, for new players, definitely go check those out. Um, which like, you know, you guys have you guys gotten a chance to to look at it, talk about it. Uh, you know, Wizards always sends us copies, but they always get lost. So they're just, you know, yeah. Not yet, <laughs> I, right, I, right, I wasn't sure right. how much swagger you guys had. So I'm, I'm sure we're on their list. I'm yeah. sure. So yeah. just, you know, yeah. but yeah. well, I mean, yeah, we I'm are on a list. <laughs> you don't know which list that is. Uh. <laughs> it's like an FBI list, is what yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Well, I'm sure you guys will be talking about it soon on your podcast over at the Misdirected Mark Network. Um, and you right. can, you know, and we'll be talking about it next Sunday right here on the Saving Throw Network. So uh, yeah. we'll, we'll have to we'll have to compare notes sometimes. I mean, in, in um, maybe two or three weeks, we're going to have uh, Will Doyle and Stacey Allen, oh. who did most of the writing on the adventure yeah. on our show. Oh, that's awesome. So there. Yeah, that's yes. great. Well, we, that's it's awesome. it's going to be a while, but we'll get there. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I will. I will have to check that out. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to to take a look at an adventure where the combatless path is possible. Um, yeah. Just to see what in the world that means, because I, you know, from <laughs> I know there's been a couple, you know, some talking about it, but I, I just want to see it and and read through the whole thing. I'm really excited. Yeah, um, I'm I'm very will, excited. Will and Stacy, yeah, Will and Stacy are amazing creators, uh, and they they do create outside the box. Uh, so if you've played any of Will's or Stacy's adventures, you know that it's not going to be the typical kick down the door, kill the monster, go to the next room, kill the monster, go to the next room, kill the monster, fight the boss, you're done. That's not that's not how they roll. Yeah. And so it's uh, it's always great to see what they can come up with. And there's always amazing twists and turns mm -hmm. and different ways to come at encounters. So uh, I'm just looking forward to to seeing what they've come up with. Yeah, I've, I've been so impressed by their design and, and particularly relevant to this, the, the non-combat design they've come up with, where it's like a, it, it almost plays like a party game mm -hmm. at times mm -hmm. with some of the design that they've done um, and just really fun twists and turns that catch you in a neat role playing way. You're like, oh oh, that's what's going to happen now. And then you've got to handle that. And it's very engaging. So oh, that's yeah, awesome. I'm excited Great. to see what they did Good. that. Also, rabbit folk. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Hair and <laughs> yes. gone. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is it confirmed that they are demons? <laughs> <laughs> did you get... That, that was well, the rumor, I, that was the oh, rumor right. I saw on Reddit, <laughs> is is uh, that they're hair gone. So they, the gone ending makes them a demon. <laughs> I, I just want to see someone if they turn into a demon, they're a Haragon gone. Oh, 
Wow. 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 <laughs> I, I, um, I'd miss D and D nerd jokes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did I sound enthusiastic in that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah. A little, a little. Okay, great. Um, let's see. And real quick uh, for the celebration, if you're around on Saturday, our saving throw folks uh, might want to know that Amy Vorpal is um, DMing an adventure called the slapstick hunt, a silly chase with, uh, with folks from the guild. That's awesome. So, yeah, that'll be yeah. should be fun. <laughs> Otherwise, there's tons of stuff to check out. DM roundtables, um, previews for uh, for dragons. There's an entire session just on how to play draconic heroes and villains. Oh, wow. um, if you've got Fizban's treasury ready to go, then uh, that might be the panel for you. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and folks, if you're out there, if you're friends of Amy Vorpal, we had her on last week. Check it out on the YouTube. It was fantastic. Yeah. It was it was a really fun <laughs> interview. She was she was a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think that does it for the news. Uh, should we, we did it. Sh should we jump into this uh, <laughs> this this main project of ours? Whomp. Yes, indeed. Ooh, All right. Oh my gosh. So we have an adventure yet to be named. Step dun, one. Dun, dun. Wait. Step one. <laughs> right adventure. All right. Here we are. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, normally what we do is we 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 do it a little more um, a little more off the wall, where it's very system agnostic. But I'm thinking today, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to write a and d, &D adventure um, for levels, I don't know, uh, for level, what's a fun level to write for? 10. A roll a d20. Let's find out. Okay. okay. 10. I picked level 10. <laughs> all right. Randomly level 10. So, Excellent. all right. Uh, and this is where to chat. Uh, you folks totally join in. We have nothing on the page. So we need your help. <laughs> Uh, anything you put in chat could end up on this adventure. So we don't know what this adventure is. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what the goal is. Uh, all we know is it's D&D &D adventure for 10th uh, level adventures. And that it starts. Uh, it starts. It's it's. All right. Uh, it starts <laughs> stars in. Oh, that's the problem. In the kitchen. Kitchen. Right. Of the. Exploration Society. That's right. Saving throws headquarters right With here. Chef Albert D. Sending the adventurers somewhere. Right. Or something. It could be anything. It doesn't even need to be like sending them somewhere. It's just it starts in the kitchen because that's where our adventures start. So, uh, chat, uh, Sean, Teos, anybody. All right, there we go. We already got someone. <laughs> Uh, NPC, a uh, druid who uses cider-based magic. That, okay. That, that is that is a good good note to start with. So this is this is this is all we got. Uh, you know, we do know there is a druid who uses uh, cider-based magic. So this is your prompt. How do you how do how would you guys start? This is all you have. Yeah, so I, I like this kind of thing because, and this is something that happens on your uh, cooking adventures. There's always the need for ingredients, which is yeah. always super fun. Yeah, yeah, I like milk runs. I, I've always loved milk runs since Shadow Runs. So, you know, mm -hmm. all of these feel like milk runs to me. <laughs> how about how about we twist it? How about we twist it and say that the uh, they actually we got the ingredient, which was a cider that yeah. was going to go into it, but the, it was it was somehow spoiled uh, or perhaps magically tainted. Yeah. Which this druid would never ever have allowed. Yeah. So what's up with that? How, why did this happen? Is there something wrong with the druid? Yeah. Perfect. Oh yeah. I like it. All right. So, uh, so our, our, our PCs, they're going to be trying to investigate why, um, why this druid would have allowed that to happen uh let's mm. see here so and so question is did folks already suffer from this magic or has it not been used yet what what's oh yeah here okay. let's even let's if take you... a step back what is the magic right yeah. right and if you want yeah. to include a a timer based adventure yeah they should you know the the People have already partaken of this, and now they are cursed or diseased right. or something. So you only have X amount of time uh, to to figure out what's going on. So 
24 so, hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, here's the thing. Every good chef will taste the food as they're going through it and getting it prepared for their guests to ensure that everything is okay. Uh, the ill magic sadly affected our chef. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a very good reason why why we need to get on it right now. Uh, he uh, looks human and doesn't like it. <laughs> so maybe it's like reverse okay. wild shape. Like you, you yeah. you're not changing right. into beast. Beasts are changing into people or something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. wow! So, <laughs> well, so here, here, here's, here's, here's a question it. about yeah. <laughs> here's a, here's a question about starting an adventure. Yeah. Uh, it's always best to start with some action rather oh. than a big long exposition. Yeah. So are the characters there when this is happening? Uh, and if so, what do they have to do right off the bat to to help alleviate the, the current situation? Yeah. So are they sitting at a table and all of a sudden everyone around them starts acting strangely, attacking each mm -hmm. other? or some other challenge that the characters have to overcome. Yeah, let's go. Let's go opening scene. Yeah, and and uh, a strong start doesn't have to be combat necessarily. Like just seeing the chef transform is a great way to get people engaged because you must do mm -hmm. something about what happened, right? You must react right. and that's always Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh the PCs are in are in the kitchen. Uh it is their turn to help the chef. And uh, and as he is tasting ingredients, uh, tasting the cider, mm -hmm. he drops to the ground. Oh, so this is this is still a backstage thing. We're not we're yeah, not I, out in I front think, of the whole society. Or oh, anything. oh, okay. oh, we we could do that. But I was I was well, I, I was here's... assuming that it would affect Chef Alberti first, and that you know if the yeah. PCs were there. Then it becomes a mess in the kitchen to try to figure out what's going on. So that could be a fun choice. So maybe you know that there is this, as was mentioned in chat, this annual banquet is going to happen. So now mm -hmm. you can choose whether you want to go directly to try to resolve the issues or try to stop the banquet from mm -hmm. moving forward or intercept the supplies or something like that. Yeah. A, a good bit of suspense can be had by having the characters all in the kitchen at the start see this happen to the chef oh and he drops and going. then and then a minute later they start hearing noises out in the main banquet hall uh because and, and so they sort of know what they're going to be seeing when they open the door but you get to describe it and it ramps up the mm -hmm. the sort of yes. dread of of what they're going to be seeing yeah wow. I like that. So does this mean that, you know, we, we see what's going on, we get to investigate, we see some some symptoms, maybe we're figuring out um, what's going on. Um, but it sounds like we're going to get this specific mission, right? Save the chef, maybe from one Domwell Zookington, yeah. is the, the leader of the Exploration Society, joining in for a guest role, just kind of shaking us and going, you've got to save him, you've got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> then, uh... then depending whether you want to make this kind of clear or not, you could either have it to where they know what has happened and must act on it. Or you could also have that here you have this uncommunicative chef yeah. who doesn't know how to speak human speak because it's all weird now. Uh, and you have to figure <laughs> out what happened and, and you know. mm -hmm. yeah. do you have to discern that it's the cider? Or do you already know it's the cider? Like that's a choice we could go with. I love that. Yeah. There's a little right. bit of a mystery there, right? Uh, let's right. see. So um, before we even get to here, uh, what we do is so now in the scene, now the PCs get to react. Right. The uh, chef is on the floor. Uh, and there is a commotion. Yeah. Out in the uh, uh, dining hall. Boom. All right. So, how do the PCs figure out what's going on? What are some What are some ways? I like the. I like what. Who is it? Is it Alex Flag who does the three clues? Um. Hmm. So you know, I like I like the yeah, three right. clues. Mm -hmm. You know, three potential clues all lead you there in different directions, different paths. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see here. Uh, I believe. Uh. What's um. Newbie DMs. 
the structure too. Um, so you know, but of course you guys also have your own own, own style. So let's see. How do they find hmm. out? Um, is the cider well, bottle on the floor? Is it on the table? Is it is it cider already mixed into something that he's eating? And then they have to figure out which ingredient that was? I mean, we have an opportunity to not make this too easy because we said this adventure was for 10th level characters. So Absolutely. we're looking at clerics who can cast contact other plane right yeah <laughs> um we could we could yeah. leave this as as kind of a mystery like some guidance you can tell that it's a food thing but yeah. you know i need to use like i need to speak telepathically to the chef to figure out you know what they're feeling because they can't really communicate to us otherwise yeah you know something like that um yeah and one thing you could so do is we, you could have a yeah. mass along those lines you could have a mass of ingredients right lots of options for what it could be um, and worst case, your control valve can be that when Domwell Zookington comes in, they could have some clues that help you write the ship. So that prevents you from yes. going too off the rails. Uh, but, but that could allow the characters to do their, in, in, use their ingenuity and creativity and, and abilities to do whatever they need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's telepathy, something that's simple. Maybe it's yeah. some sort of divination, but. Cause they've got a lot. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe the, the mystery of this is not what happened. Maybe that's something we expect the PCs with their abilities can do relatively quickly. Maybe the mystery part is like, where do we need to go now? Yeah. Like, where is this ruid? How do we find them? Um, and, and so right? I, I'm not sure. Skills <laughs> and, and succeed. Mm -hmm. So if you have something mm -hmm. like, um, you know, a list of ingredients, and then you can deduce sort of what's been added, what hasn't, so you can narrow it down. Like that's all fun, right? Like even if it's tenth level, I think that sort of engagement can can be fun, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, a puzzle, <laughs> right? Uh, let's see. Uh, like what are you know, chef feet, right? These things could give bonuses. Cooking skill, chef feet. Mm -hmm. yep. um, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, herbalism. Mm -hmm. Uh, healing and yeah, if you wanted combat though i think with what we've got going on in the other room there's probably plenty enough to go to go on but you, you could also add something here depending on what we want the cider to be doing but... right yeah i mean you know maybe yeah. maybe it affects people oh, let's see so it affects let's go here's with this. here's 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 something uh if for for example it makes people attack each other yeah here, the characters are now rushing into the main dining hall, and they can't just fireball everyone. Mm -hmm. Right. So they yes, need like. to find a way to deal with this problem that they can't hit with a sword or blow up with a spell. They could use sleep. They could use those spells that they yeah. might not normally use at 10th yeah. level. Oh, and that's uh, fun, right? Yeah. To, to diffuse the situation without causing harm. Calm emotions, things like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, the bard could have a, a field day here. <laughs> yeah, and mm -hmm. one thing you can do is you can perhaps keep them, you know, vulnerable in that they have the statistics of NPCs, um, though some of them could be more could be stronger. Uh, but you could also perhaps maybe there's some really strange element that's going on that's very druidic that could be far more powerful. So it'd be fun to imagine NPC that can you know breathe fire or kind of do like shillelagh or suddenly like huge claws or something and yeah. but still is quite vulnerable but it's a threat to the other people so it's more about the timing of it right save everybody and stop this rather than defeat yeah, yeah. uh you know <laughs> it could be something as uh simple as someone sprinkled some of the cider on their salad and you know or something and then it's mm -hmm. a giant plant creature right uh <laughs> yeah right yeah but I, I really like the idea that, you know, we are going to be using Entangle to slow people down. We want to build walls to keep them separated, you know, yeah. more than more right. than just. <laughs> yeah, and that could even yeah. be Eagle like monster. a terrain situation, right? So it's, it's less mm -hmm. spell than it is more like terrain effect where these things are happening from. Yeah, maybe the cider sprinkled on the salads. I love that. Mm -hmm. It's all coming together. We like druid chaos, right? It's just, yeah. <laughs> It's chaos love zones. <laughs> Especially when they I see that. <laughs> Let's add auras. <laughs> yeah. Auras and zones. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, oh, so in here's here's another thing. Is part of the reason the folks are attacking each other is um, 
they are all changed to different um, uh, uh, ancestries, right? Mm. Right, so you know the human. Some of the humans shift to Dragonborn, and some of the you know uh, Goliaths all of a sudden halflings, and and they're just infuriated by these changes, and that's part of what's driving them. I think. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Are we? Um, let's see. What's a good easy way to do that? Roll on the reincarnation table. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean. You know, yeah, I like if a PC does it, I say, yeah, roll on the reincarnation table. For NPCs, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Right? We just say there's X amount of dragonborn and halflings and, uh, and, and, and one fact, giant plant creature. I think it's worth putting a pin on this for later that with this much transformation going on, transforming the PCs at some point later is a great concept, right? To, to yeah. force yes. that exact same, you've got to play as something else. It's super neat. I love it. Boom. I like that. In here, let's go ahead and uh, stop that. <laughs> Boom. Let's remember that for later. All right. Oh, now I'm seeing, especially if you can somehow put this cider on a salad, like maybe it's it's infused in the air. You walk into a chamber at some point, and you're like, oh, oh no, oh no. And that's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you smell that cider? And <laughs> Yeah. Well, in my brain, it was like you step through the cider waterfall into the cave beyond. Yeah. But... <laughs> that works too. Oh man! All right. So, uh, so then, after after the PCs, uh, let's see here. After the PCs uh, calm the chaos, mm -hmm. uh, then Dom Zukington appears to send the PCs to try to fix this problem. May have some additional information to help the PCs sort the problem out. Um, and I think that leads us to uh, wh where do they go now? Yeah, so I think I think it's the idea of is it a, a supplier of the cider? Is it an ingredient that was in, or do we have to go to see the druid? I guess we probably want to go see the druid. Probably want to go see the druid. So uh, yeah, the PCs are sent to go see the druid. Uh, now here's right. here's where you can do something where if the idea is to uh reward or give consequences for success or failure and not just combat but in investigation yeah so if they are able to investigate properly they know to go right to the druid if they cannot investigate properly they only know that all the ingredients came from this merchant okay so they are that now they go to the merchant doesn't even have to be anything but a role-playing encounter but then because they went there first in the in any encounters thereafter things are a little tougher yeah yeah more monsters harder dcs mm -hmm. yeah just like to that. make that make those consequences uh or rewards for doing it quickly put them in place yeah i mean you know i i like using disadvantage on things so you know like i i, I love disadvantage on a save against the cider or the, the changing things mm -hmm. right i think that's that's yep. good um, I like, uh, you know, maybe a couple DCs are higher mm -hmm. and, uh, there is a few more enemies because the PCs wasted time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Cool. Um, there are a couple of things we could do with, uh, time here. So one is that this may not be the only event to which this, uh, cider was sent. Oh, yeah. That's true. Too. Yeah. So we haven't figured out the motive then, of this druid yet. Yeah. Yeah. Here, let's, and let's, <laughs> so, uh, and, and that might be something you can learn at various levels. Like you could learn it from mm. the merchant or from the druid, or maybe even if you're, if you uh, investigate carefully here, you would know that this, this was sent to various locations. Yeah. Right. It would be nice if, if there was a, an, a plus side to needing to go talk to this merchant, right? It's not all negatives, but like you get to the merchant and the merchant is scared of this druid. You know, they, yeah. they, uh, they give you some hints that yeah. this is not going to be a simple exchange of thoughts later on. <laughs> That's a great idea. Cause if you set the Druid as being like, this is the Druid of winter and decay or something like that. And yeah. you know, they can help I mean... you sometimes, but other times they're, you know, a bane and they, they just like interlopers, right? That sort of thing. That can always be mm -hmm. fun. The FDA yeah. suggests not buying your apples from the Druid of Winter and Decay. Just in general. <laughs> just in general. Just, just yeah. a small bit. Right. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. I mean, yeah. But I, I, I like the idea that 
potentially, if we have this event and that's all the investigating we do, there could be a mistake, right? There could be an ingredient that went in and you're like, that's that's the wrong one. I wonder if the druid knows this is happening or if this is happening on, right? We're just not sure. But yeah, you talk to the merchant, you go somewhere else and you're like, oh no, this is, this is a pattern. This is very bad. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe normally the, through a long-standing agreement, the druid comes to some, you know, to the merchant or to some place. But now you've got to go to them, and that's dangerous, right? Because we, yeah. the whole tenth level characters thing, uh, they live in, in a place that's inhospitable to most people. Right, mm -hmm. big threats. Oh, winter and decay <laughs> make that so inhospitable. <laughs> I mean, it's raining here right now, so. Yeah. Oh, congrats. <laughs> Yay, rain. Yes. Uh, so, rain. So so I had a little something to that. So normally the druid delivers the cider on the back of a mammoth, but now the PCs have to go there because I feel yeah. like a like crusty, gross druid on top of a mammoth that has like, you know, matted hair uh, is a good image of, of them coming mm -hmm. goof, goof into town mm -hmm. and they're just cranky. But, they're, but the only time you see them smile is whenever they hand over this cider. And uh, because that's that's the only thing they truly love. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. So it looks like the 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 next chunk is going to be uh, the travel to the druid. The travel and the transformation. <laughs> yeah. So wouldn't want to transform them too late because you want them to get used to this. And right. I, I see this this note in the chat about, you know, a body transference effect. So the party ends up running other characters. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to make new characters for everyone, but I'd love to give them a template of some kind. You know, mm -hmm. your your abilities change in this way. And well, now you're a demon rabbit. And also you can, you know, jump 30 feet if you want to or, you know, or something else in there. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, and one thing that can also happen, though it's a little riskier design-wise, usually people at the table um, pick a mix of characters, right? Like you're not going to have everybody be a half elf. So usually it'll be wild. And if we bank on that, you, what, one thing you could do is you swap. Yeah. So that's one <laughs> from a role-playing perspective, right? If you have like the halfling and Goliath, and 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 you choose to swap them, then that's can kind of be neat, but you're taking some risk with that design that maybe somehow they really are an all halfling party. So maybe you need a plan B uh, yeah, because it right. can happen. But but I do like that kind of swapping because it, it forces a change, a very mental change of like, I was leaning into this for my role playing, and but now I've got to do what they were doing. And that can be fun. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that one. That one also. I mean, as long as the table is cool with that, that could be really, really fun. Um, yeah. You know, some of my some of my kids would get so frustrated at having to. I have to play. I, no, no, I don't want to be that character. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah and, and, so and, that... and, and we could have two options, right? If the table yeah. is cool with yeah. it, you can swap characters. Uh, Which I that is very fun. I, I yeah. enjoy that because uh, you get to play they... them a little bit off. Ify, <laughs> yeah. You, uh, yeah. Uh, you can just have them take a template or or yeah. change their race. Yeah. And one thing you can and do another, is another question, both in, uh, one question is this, you know, what's the change? The second question for you as a designer is, when is the change? Yes. Do you want to do it very early while they're traveling to give the table lots of time to role play as this other? Or do you want it to be something that happens like in the heat of battle? Mm. Um, so it's it's there's not as much role playing involved, but it's it sort of changes the way this combat's going to take place. And both yeah. could be fun, depending on the, the party that you're running for. Uh, so it's, you know, something to keep in mind for a designer. Yeah. Well, and I'm thinking maybe yeah. they change the first time when they enter uh, the realm. But, you know, mm -hmm. seeing as I am a millennial, I ask, why not both? Uh, <laughs> they get, you know, uh, one of the final combat powers, whoever they're fighting, is to transform the PCs. Uh, you know, Again. <laughs> and, and maybe with just a recharge, right? On a recharge. <laughs> And just you know, just one everybody of rotate. <laughs> you know, why not, right? You know, it, it, yeah. it, it, and it can either once again, like, cool, swap characters. Iffy, yeah, you know, we'll just change your races around, something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, it it might develop some interesting tactics 
whenever it's, you're rolling on a resurrection table to see what your next race would be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we went on the sort of um, template angle, you know, that's where it can be really great to have some nice handouts. Yes, mm -hmm. I love handouts. Yeah, and and, yeah. and you could do things that capture the essence of it. Like, you know, if you give somebody the lucky feat for becoming a halfling mm -hmm. or, the, or the lucky power, right, uh, that they have to reroll a one, you know, you could do a couple of those, like one for each of those. So now it's also fun, mm -hmm. but then maybe you give them some role-playing instructions that they have to lean into, like things they hate, right? Yeah. Because there's that whole aggression angle to it. So maybe a, a situation where they must do a thing or are encouraged to do a thing, right? If you don't do this thing, you get disadvantaged or something. And that can be a lot of fun to, to be an agent of role-playing in that whole scene. Yeah. I like that a lot, um, just because it will shake it up in not just a combat sense, you know, or a, um, you know, body transference. But I, I love the idea that people need to role play a little bit differently. You know, if I mm -hmm. if I swap to a new character, I would try to have a lot of fun with it just so that, you know, that player is like, that's not what my character would do. And I'm like, but it's me. It's where I'm not you. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. That could be a lot. That sounds great. But it's the new role playing ideas. I'm I'm digging that. Ooh. Yeah. All right. We, fun, um, yeah. we have some we have some good good comments from chat. So Oh, we really do. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna roll back a little bit and uh, I'm gonna bring up some of these that I like. Uh there I like this one from uh Zanyaz. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen again. Uh I I wanna roll back to here in the area where we're where they're investigating. Uh let's see here. Uh you know, uh yes. tasting. I think tasting <laughs> Uh, maybe we make a very small, um, uh, you know, we make a small table for if the PCs taste, like take a small taste <laughs> of the cider. This is very good because uh, yeah. I, I didn't think about this at the time, but of course I would do this. And, of course I would try some of the cider right. to see what happens. Yeah, right. And, Random right. effects, I'm in. <laughs> like, and most of the effects are good. Most of them, most of the effects. Uh, effects are positive uh and maybe maybe it's uh like you know one x per you know day since it's only 24 hours you get a random uh racial trait so like lucky uh night vision you know that type of stuff mm -hmm. uh um, yeah, hellish rebuke of a tiefling right like right fun. yeah yeah mm -hmm. things like that uh I like that. And you grow a tail. <laughs> yeah, it'd be right. fun. <laughs> uh, and then something bad, like uh, you, um, I don't know, maybe you pick up uh, a, 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 an aquatic elf's gills, right? And you have to keep them moist. Oh, right. What's the grung one? You have to like immerse your head in a bucket of water once for an hour <laughs> a day or something? Right, yeah, grung thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, little things like that, that's like great. if they do some sipping. I think that's that's pretty oh. lovely. Uh, yeah, let's see good. here. That's very good. Um, boom, boom, boom. The, uh, the Druid of Winter and Decay has a grudge against the Exploration Society because something about its activity over the past year has affected his supply chain or business. Oh my gosh. He would, yeah. 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 Because the chef is keep sending people out after ingredients. That's ridiculous. <laughs> like, that's right. Like, even Druid is really they, furious. The, the Druid could even uh, dislike this longstanding deal to supply these ingredients and resents them. And so you, you have all these reasons you think that the Druid could be against you. And maybe they are, maybe they aren't. We can decide that, but. Yeah, I love it. And then uh, I feel like ultimately, uh, this is from uh, Art Stewart Dean. Uh, I feel like ultimately they will need one of the original apples to reverse the, the effect. Mm -hmm. And I love this. I, you know, it, yeah, it cool. feels like you know, at the end, there's like maybe a tree and a in a grove with an opening in a grove, and the light shining on it, and they have to get to it. But then the yeah, final conflict is right there, right with yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> I see tree that's hurling exploding apples. Oh, I'm just gonna yeah. write that down because that's awesome. Yeah, oh, tree hurling exploding apples. Yeah, because oh, so yeah, yeah, because uh, this is. You know, and the treants like the druid for some weird reason, but no one else. So no one else is allowed to get to those apples. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Wow. Well, okay. So now they're traveling to the druid. Yeah. So what do we want to encounter on the way there? 
angry drunk hornets. All right. <laughs> what? Oh, hey. Yeah. All right. So uh, that was my nickname in college. Yeah. <laughs> that joke never gets old. It does. Never. It's very responsible. <laughs> Look, you have a bunch of hornets in your dorm room one time. Um, <laughs> I'm old. There's no videotape. I'm not worried. <laughs> All right, they enter. All right, so uh, you know we'll we'll say uh, uh, our our good leader uh, Dom Zuckington. He uh, he opens a portal, a portal. Like you portals do. are fun. Oh wait, no wait, they're traveling. So uh, yeah, yeah, because they're yeah. also they're There's high some level, so they're they may levels. have ways they want to travel. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know. I love this. So uh, so they know they have to travel to the druids realm. How they get there, or to the merchant. How they get there is their own problem. <laughs> right. Um, Give them a simple map. That's yeah, fine. and we'll say you know uh, by foot. Uh, the uh, the area is um, one day away. So they have to figure out a different way of getting there, which means you know by horse, uh, horses, whatever uh, would be a quarter of that I think, something like that. Right. So we get into those those travel overland travel rules are, are... right. Yeah, it, <laughs> and and this is why I, I I would just assume kind of go ahead and go. Oh, by the way, these are the the ones that we will be using. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, and and the timing can be tweaked depending on how much time you want them to have to resolve the issue and save the other towns that have this wider cider consumption coming up. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, we'll, this is this is an area for our, some of our time constraints, right? Mm -hmm. We'll figure that out. Steal a little time from them, make them rush a little bit more. Um, then they near the grow uh, the uh, the realm. We're gonna call it a realm because I think it's bigger than just a grove. Like it's an entire forest that forest swampy, okay. uh, cold, gross tar pit area that he he uh, he kind of command or they command. Um, they, then they near the realm. I, and I think, I think this is the appropriate time we could send some weird monsters at them. Uh, I we, love the hornets. They, there should oh, yeah. be like wyvern sized hornets. Yeah. <laughs> that have also been changed by this mm -hmm. cider. Wyvern oh my gosh. Sized angry hornets. I love it. When Since they lift off right from there. the trees. Oh geez. I want the, I want leaves to fall. <laughs> as the trees bounce yeah. as they fly up in the air. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, you know it. The the, uh, the sound of a helicopter. <laughs> oh geez, yeah. When they approach. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean that's kind of cool. Just having these these deafening hornets. It's that's just the way it is. They're that loud. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you can just, just use the wyvern to be stat heard. block because they've got the poison stinger already. Yeah, I love um, it. Oh yeah. So you could just add like a drone. Just add some sort of drone effect uh, that. Frightens or something, um, mm -hmm. and you've got your you've got your hornets. <laughs> frightens. I appreciate that. Justin. Frightens appreciate and that. Uh, maybe deafens too, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're they're high level level species. <laughs> oh yes, this. Uh, sorry, um, thing I would uh, probably we need ornithopter. Oh, yeah. or ornithopter. Right. <laughs> this can mess up your uh, concentration checks, which can be a uh, good yeah. Uh, yeah. challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Uh, what? Yeah, I like that. What is this helicopter? We have sent the adventurers all kinds of ways uh, <laughs> that uh, that they probably know what hel helicopters are. But we're gonna go with an ornithopter. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's one. Along the way, they find a party of rogues who would usually be robbing the supply chain, but these rogues are making a hastily treat, uh, retreat from the druid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They near the realm. That is not bad. They see. Yep, that's a great idea. And if there's any magical effects that would that the characters are going to come up against, it has they happened to it. the yeah. rogues. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to put that after the mur murder hornets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They they see a group of of, of rogues running from the uh, the realm of realm of the druid. Uh. You know, and and they all look strange, right? They all look 
we uh, strange in that like uh, like one has a a single wing. Uh, they are dragging uh, one on a um, what are uh, what's those things where you call you drag people who are injured, like not a stretcher but a stretcher. We'll just call it a stretcher. Yeah. Uh, dragging um, on a stretcher. Sledge. Who has oh, a... It mermaid, begins with P, uh, I think. Yeah. Mermaid tail. You know, things like that, right? Like, they, they just don't look right. Um, there we go. So, there we go. Uh, you know, and I... I was I, wrong. I, I think that would be... This will be a fun fight, and that would be a very interesting encounter, right? Where we... Where, where they pass. And then maybe... Right. Maybe they even warned the PCs to not go in there. It's weird. I mean, it's it's a good time to get some good information about what the druid is like today, yeah. um, which may be different than uh, what we've learned anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so they 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 have some uh, information on the druid, but it is um, it is told through the lens of fear. So whenever, you know, like, and I, the idea is like, you know, they saw the, maybe they saw the druid, but, you know, sure, maybe in real life, he's a 5'10", uh, you know, scrawny white guy, but they're like, no, the druid, 20 feet tall, towering over trees, hurling tar balls at us as we were trying, <laughs> and, right? You know, slightly yeah, exaggerated because everything's bigger, huh? Mm -hmm. Could yeah. be a giant druid. Oh, it could be a giant, right? You have a mammoth. Yeah. I mean, that's a perfect mount for a giant. So. Sure. Yeah, sure. Oh, I love wow. it. So I, I like these rogues as total liars. Huh? <laughs> it's the whole time. <laughs> yeah, we forget to mention that it was a giant. Yeah. Yeah, no one mentions it until now. <laughs> right. right. So in one hand, they're like, the PCs get to go, well, these people just said it's a giant, but no one said anything about a giant before. <laughs> it's a giant that just casts reduce whenever it wants to, right, whenever, whenever, sell whenever it their cider. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else could they want? I, I love the, you know, rodents I mean, I think these rogues right? should be like, we didn't steal anything. If we would never steal anything, we would never do anything bad. We weren't caught um, trying to take those apples. You know, I, I, I feel like we should definitely not trust this narrator at all. <laughs> no, no, they are not trusted narrators. They, you know, no, you may be able to get a little bit of information out of them. But it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be told through through a rogue's mouth, peppered but with a lot off, of fear. Going off your idea of rodents of unusual size, so maybe it's not a fire swamp, but it's um, maybe it's a a a forest where things are decaying, and horrible uh, gases are released. And maybe those oh, things yeah. are infused with the cider, right? So that so they warn you that mm -hmm. you know this swamp, the things are decaying and it's noxious, and and that's where where you can then it gives them a clue as to what's going to happen later, right? And this I like this because now you know when we get to it, it is going to be this this gas bubbling up from the ground that's going to start this transformation, and not not just cider raining from the skies. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. I like it. That makes a ton of sense. Oh man! Okay. All right. Yeah. So now, so they've 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 seen the 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 horrible effects. They have investigated. They have made their way to the druid's realm. They they well, on the way they fought some hornets. That were uh, very big. And they ran into some rogues. And now they're getting into the actual... They finally... They enter the realm. Let's go ahead and... I should have been doing this the whole time, but that's okay. They enter the realm. Boom. All right. So, um... We, we already kind of described the, the dank, dark forest filled with decay but what are some other things like you know I, I like brainstorming weird visuals that we can use potentially in box text right so uh you know the path they follow um you know the ground is sticky and... rotted leaves what was that rotted leaves and rotted leaves everywhere yeah 
Um, and if they go off trail, it is just muck. Muck that goes to their knees. Mm -hmm. I, I like the idea that this this uh, this little forest here has a lot of, of wards, you know, potentially like, you know, antlers tied to things, uh, whatever else posted around, but they're all facing inward. They're not stopping you like, you know, they're, they're protecting everyone else from what's at the center of this forest. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. We weird antlers. Uh, yeah. Tied to trees. The PCs. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the people who live nearby <laughs> have set up. <laughs> The PCs can investigate. Uh, they notice that they all point inward, and that's and that's the that's the big clue that they will get from those. I like that. All right. So now they're in the realm. Of course, they're going to get hit by gas. So that's going to be one of the first things that has with, to happen, right? With all this muck, you yeah. know, that could always be an opportunity to throw in some sort of oozy, muddy, elementally type thing. Yes. Which, if you want to make the traversing dangerous, right, then that could be where, I, I would imagine a scene where you're trying to go through an area and, and find this path. Like, it's, a, it's great, like, we've already established the trail is important. If you go off, it's unsafe. Yeah. Then you move a little further, and now it's like, you can't tell where the trail went. And then how you deal with it will dictate maybe how the encounter plays out because they might do something like fly over it or that you know something like that but maybe there is a combination of like vines and mud golemy type things yeah so you can hit them either way Could be a lot of fun rancid cider uh, elemental yeah <laughs> like that I think the video game Pitfall would have been better with mud golems involved. Yeah, so absolutely. I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> Go um, I love it. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, 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 and I think, you know, it's... And maybe it's something they can void, right? Like on... Because um, cause they're big, powerful PCs, so let's let them use their powers, right? So if they fly... Uh, it is only the vine encounter. But what I would give the vine creatures is something to shove them into the mud or mm -hmm. either drag them mm -hmm. into the mud or, or knock them back, right? So yeah, you can have your encounter, encounter either way. Mud, knock around. Right, like you... you you get up over the canopy, you look down, and there you can see like this this dome of like branches just like thickly tied mm -hmm. together in the center. You can't get in there. Mm -hmm. you head back down in the trees and they just pull you. You know, once you get within like I don't know, fifty feet maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um and you know, and, and one thing you can do if if you think the party's at this level, because tenth level's sort of on the edge, mm -hmm. right? But but if you think that they're yeah. gonna do something like being like they're gonna bypass all this stuff. Which I wouldn't quite expect a tent, but um, if you needed to, one thing you can do for these kinds of things is to create something that if they're flying over, they would see. So we could have like an old vine covered idol or something like that. Something that, that would bring them down here to interact with it if you're worried about that. Um, but if you think they're just kind of traversing, then you're, you're good, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when you do that, also make it worth their while for going down. Oh, yeah. Whether it be information or, or right. Yeah. yeah, like, and that's actually and that, a good idea. What 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 would we want to reward? What was the reward for the vine encounter? We didn't really have one for the hornets, um, you know, because hornets don't carry loot, uh, and hornets are just jerks, so they don't carry it. Um, and then, mm -hmm. um, but uh, with the with the uh, with the vine encounter, what could they? What could they? What kind of loot could they get? I mean, this is a great place to have old skeletons buried in the muck yeah. and stuff like that that they could find. There's a lot of stuff. But also, it might be nice to start cluing the party into some of the reasons. So yeah. if it was like an idol that's covered in vines, if it um, you know, references something that's been some ancient evil or some something that the, the druid warships or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's nice to start giving an indication to where the players have some ideas of maybe this is what's going on. Right. Yeah. And the first, the first part of an antidote for whatever's happening back at the dining hall could be here as well. Oh yeah. No, I think you need to collect three, right. Three ingredients to make the antidote. And here's the first, the mushrooms growing on the, uh, the idol or the moss growing on the idol. I love this. Ooh, I like that. Perfectly, <laughs> perfectly <Oof. laughs> uh, preserved uh, corpses. Uh, I like corpses uh, with clues and loot. Um, so clues, uh, they find something related to the cure um, and maybe some notes in a bag um, and then as far as loot what's something that would be useful against these evil treants that we wouldn't normally think of because I unlike Gygax I feel like it's fun to give adventurers the items to solve the problem before the problem <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the dragon with the uh, dragon slayer sword in their horde yeah. after you don't uh -huh. need it yeah yeah <laughs> I like the uh, wooden cart covered with guilty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I think I I think we could totally add that cart there too. Yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, there is a cart filled with ingredients. Uh, but these are the untainted uh, ciders. Right, is this like the rogues cart? You know, they kind of left it here as they fled. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. We just now recovered yeah. it. That's a good way to tie it all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the rogues cart. Yeah, and, and maybe um, what was I going to say? The 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 you you could either point to so if you had travelers who they preserve corpses, you know, one possibility is they came here. Maybe the druid experimented on their village first, mm. and they've come here seeking the cure, which is either some of the ingredients or the the apples or something. You know, they they some knowledge of that, right? So you could you can see they failed in their mm -hmm. attempt to get this thing, and now you know one of the things. Let's see. I'm trying to think about treasure that we could drop that could be useful. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm seeing we're having this treant throwing some exploding apples, which I like. We're having yeah. this this druid of decay, which um, envisioning spore-like potentially. Is that what we're talking about with yeah. decay or yeah, some sort so. of quick rotting sure. ability? I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I do like both of these. these. Hmm. Uh, the treants might not like magical or artificial or artificer made termites. Uh, the treants may be vulnerable to hornet poison, or maybe oh. it's or maybe it's a net, a weird net to catch the apples. I. That's cool. Yeah, they can I can see that being in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, golden mag sickle or something like that. A magical net and spear. That it reminds me. There's one of the early fifth head adventures has an axe that's good for cutting down trees. Right, I've handed that one out to kids before. Um, you know, that sort of thing would be perfect right here. <laughs> Apples. Yeah, let's do let's do a magical net and axe. Yeah. Oh gosh, I'm gonna try and find that one. Axe. Or a scythe or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were saying sickle. I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's <laughs> do that. Uh triads. On on here and we're getting corrupted. Uh triads. Ah, cool. So in. glad you're typing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm used to I'm used to everyone saying how bad my spelling is. Boom. <laughs> we have technology. Nice. I like this. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. It's from Lost Mine of Fandelver. The the axe called Hugh, that uh, does maximum damage when you hit a plant or an object made of wood. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All sort right. of deals always fun. Ooh, corrupted treants. I love that. <laughs> right, you know, because it's it's a, it's a little more focused, right, to the adventure. 
-hmm. which which i you know if i have a bunch of weird magic items that are were only useful in one adventure that's just stories for my my character to tell later on so i love those types of things yeah. mm -hmm. all right so uh yeah so they've 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 made it through this to this idol they've dealt with the vines and the muck and the mud monsters they've uncovered these clues um i think our next beat is uh the encounter with the druid right mm -hmm. sure yeah um i was just looking up tree blights um they are a cr7 if we're talking about corrupted tree and so we could certainly make one of those much more dangerous yeah. fitting a level 10 party um or we could go straight for it and and take a tree int. <laughs> um, yeah. I like taking a tree and just, well. and just messing with it. Yeah, we'll just mess with Make the tree. Dark. Mess yeah. with the tree int. And really, it won't take too much. Shambling mounds are always an option. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, and that's you know, uh, let's just toss that in here too. Trees are great. I like trees. What I love about all the plant stuff is it tends to be uh, synergistic with what the druids are doing which is always great right mm -hmm. um so the encounter with the druid do they encounter the druid in the grove with the treants or do they encounter the druid before that um thinking about our, our our story beats here so let's let's toss let's go back so here we go here's the very beginning uh we'll just underline that so i keep track so there's the very beginning this is that whole opening scene um boom there we go. We'll underline that too. Opening scene. Then they go on their adventure, or they clear into chaos, and then they go on their adventure to go either find the druid, find the merchant. Once they do one of those, they travel to the druid. This is going to be our next bit, right? And uh, mm -hmm. this is where they run into the hornets. This is where they run into the rogues, which gives more information. They enter the realm, go through the dark forest filled with decay, if they fly or do skill checks. However, they end up at this vine-covered idol where they fight the, 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 the vine golems as well as, like, mud stuff. And, uh, and then they get, it, they get some more clues. They get the magical net and sickle uh, so that they... Uh, maybe they don't know why they have it yet, but it'll come together as they get to the final encounter. Uh, but mm -hmm. first, is the encounter with the druid the final encounter, or is something else going on? That's a, there's an interesting thought in the chat here, which I just want to bring up right here at the yeah. end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About the druid. Like, mm -hmm. we, we've been talking about this, like, the druid is is the villain. But we also, I think, mentioned a strange, you know, vine-covered idol that might have been here for a very long time. Like, maybe it is, like, the, the evil force that has been infused in this tree. The tree is, like, the villain if we wanted to. And so, potentially, we could, like convince the druid or somehow charm them to not be part of the combat but we still have this 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 deadly demonic somehow you know or mm -hmm. otherwise evil tree yeah i think that's it's a great come, idea yeah, we gotta get those apples yeah yeah i think that's a great idea and gives the characters the chance to if they foolishly rush in and just attack the druid right away they make an enemy if they take the time to mm -hmm. talk to you know him or her and they realize that Oh, this druid, even though they're not necessarily a great uh, social person, <laughs> not friendly, they had no idea what was what was happening here. It was actually this treant that gave that that gives the apples that mm -hmm. f tricked the druid into just giving them away without checking. I am now like envisioning this epilogue moment where we take the druid to a spa day. Um <laughs> <laughs> just clean off some of that grime later on and <laughs> yeah they join the society who knows <laughs> yeah so yeah exactly now they have two options they can try to social it say hey by the way do you realize like uh do you do you realize what you're doing and you know and i, yeah, I just deliver i like skill challenges so uh, we, 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 we have our first ability. angry orchard joke, so that was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And we could go back to to when you see that idol. There may be some more clues there that allow you to to learn that the druid recently uncovered this idol. Okay. Um. In, in fact, maybe the the rogues, uh, since we put their cart there, maybe the rogues happened upon the druid clearing that idol okay yeah 
I like yeah, that. I love it. Yeah. Uh, some yeah, and they've been wandering, confused for you know weeks. So maybe they're there or days or whatever. And so they, you know, it's been some time, and the players can get a sense of maybe this idol had some magic within it or something like that, and something was released from this idol. I just did an adventure with uh, with Knowles and read up in all the lore for in Volos about them, which was pretty incredible. So now I'm trying to dig into which demon lord might be responsible for this sort of thing. <laughs> right. You know who? Mm -hmm. uh, Is it the Lady of Rotten Decay, the demon queen of fungi? <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Yeah. You know, in, I don't know. <laughs> right? Yeah, some clues show that the druid was investigating the idol. Maybe the druid doesn't know what the idol is. Like, it showed up all of a sudden um, mm -hmm. uh, in, in his grove, uh, already covered with all these vines. One way you could give a, a hint of this is it could be possible the characters learned what the druid is. Like maybe the druid is some particular race and you show up and they're a different one. Oh. Which tips you off the fact that they've been affected by this too. Right. Now they're a giant. <laughs> now they're a giant, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Early on it was clear they were... Early on it was clear they were... Uh, early on... I don't want to do human. Early on, it was clear that gnome. they were a gnome. There you go. Love gnomish <laughs> druids. And now they are a giant. Uh, oh, and this could be a, you know, one of the clues is a, a mammoth-sized saddle uh, built for a gnome. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Can't use that. All right. I I, I do think. Notice... Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just to say that there is a, a. I was looking at D and D Beyond at monsters here, and there is a uh, essentially spellcasting treant that uh, appears in Storm King's Thunder CR nine. Oh, that's perfect. And that's kind of a fun Let's bring concept it back. for an end monster. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's not cool. OGL. But, yeah, there, there's no there's no plants above CR nine <laughs> in in most sources unless you go third party. Yeah, so so, so this is the perfect something. opportunity to throw all the plants at your PCs. This is true. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, and then so, I've been doing. Uh, what sorry, I've been doing a little bit of research, and Zugit Moy is is feeling like a, a serious. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to read more about demon lords. They're fantastic. Yeah. Which is great. <laughs> uh, yeah. But seems like the perfect force for kind of this narrative, uh, even if you yeah. know, she's not going to show up here. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, yeah. An idol to her could be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then the bonus here, if they do this, is that they know about the treants uh, ahead of time and gives them the opportunity to prepare. Um, do they have that spell in 5th edition um, that they had in 4th edition where you could go into a, a zone for an hour and come out rest fully rested? Sort of. Uh, there's something like that. Yeah, well, you know... Well, there's uh, the Healing Spring shenanigans that has errata. Yeah. Sure. The Druid just cast a spell that gives the PCs a full rest. Boom, done. Right? Kind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're a nice DM. I would never do that for you. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> I know. But I, I maybe not a full rest. Maybe, I don't know. This was just the first thing to pop in my head, right? Like, then I don't feel so bad throwing, you know, six treants and four shambling mounds at the PCs or right. whatever, right? Right. I mean, they or just just if anyone is very injured, cast some cure wounds on them. Yeah, uh, the druid Without heals. Right. We'll just yeah. say, the druid heals the PCs. Um, right. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, they get a uh, they get a short rest, uh, and and they get a short rest. Mm -hmm. We don't really want the druid to heal this transformation at this moment, right? No. So, well, so druid, nothing's going on there. Well, the druid's can't, transformed. Right? He can't figure it out. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, okay. All right. They'll have to work together. <laughs> all right. So, or they blindly rush into combat. So, what happens here? Well, they don't uh, have knowledge currently of the treants. Uh, so, what do they get if they blindly rush into combat? Just full of clones. Uh, whoop, whoop other than, on. Other than whooped on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I say that you you play out the battle with the druid, and then right as the battle is about to end, or even before it's going to end, the treants come in. Oh, yeah. I love and it. And so, you know, the, pun the punishment is you have two battles back to back without any rest. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Quick transition. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, just as as the PCs are about to defeat the uh, druid, in comes the treants. Yeah. I like that a lot. I love it. All right. Yeah. All right, so uh, now, I guess it's the treant battle. One way <laughs> or another, they're going to deal, have to deal with these treants to get the, to, Remove uh, Treant Battle to remove the corrupted one that is controlling all the others. Mm -hmm. others. I have to take my show on the road, but thank you all uh, oh, yeah. for, oh, for having me out. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, have, have a good time uh, finishing this adventure. I can't wait to we hear will. what, what y'all come up with. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so close. much, Sean. Thanks for hanging thank out. Thank you. And take we'll care. see you <laughs> next time. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, we are. Excellent. I did get distracted. We are dangerously close, close. to the end I mean, of yeah. our time. So, yeah, so let's We finish. were like, this will go short. It'll be... Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Blazing through. This adventure's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I think one of the things that could happen is um, we, we, that tree could... The tree with the perfect apple or whatever, that could be in this scene or, or it could be something that you can do after you have this yeah. fight. I don't know what you like better. Yeah, the tree with the perfect apple, um, well, appears. It, it doesn't really matter, right? It's magic, right? It appears when the final uh, corrupted treant drops. I like it. And it just appears in the middle near them, right? Near Maybe the it's covered in vines and the vines wither yeah. away, revealing it. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. yeah, it is covered and vines and the vines wither away i love it nice Boom. i like that because we could also have you know like some of the some of the muck that we've got here starts drying up after this this influence is gone you know maybe this isn't meant to be so swampy <laughs> yeah yeah i love it all right well i you know i do kind of think that's our adventure right oh, we, awesome we, we, head we, back to the chef turn in the ingredients create the antidotes yeah we get that moment where everything's back to normal Right. And, uh, and then someone proposes a toast, and then everyone goes, wait, 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 and then it cuts to black. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Guys, I found some cider in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Everyone freezes with one hand forward. Yeah. <laughs> I miss the 80s. <laughs> I mean, they knew how to start and end TV shows with beautiful really montages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for helping us out. Uh, we do this yeah. every Sunday right here on Saving Throw, uh, starting at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we typically go till about 4. Uh, and, uh, yeah, come hang out with us. Teos, uh, you know, your partner ran away, but tell them a little bit about uh, your show. Uh, just very quickly, you can find us at Mastering D and D on Twitter, and the podcast is Mastering Dungeons. So you can find it wherever good podcasts are found. You can find me at AlphaStream.org, and also hanging out at the Saving Throw Network because it's so much fun. Yeah, that's it. We we have we have definitely seen you in the chat, and we've of course had you on the show. Uh, Rich, what <laughs> what do you have going on this week? Ooh, oh, gosh, I think it's a pretty sleepy week. Honestly, the Academy is going strong. Uh, we're starting to uh, gear up for season two, which is coming in mid-October. But uh, but yeah, having a good time there. You can track me down on Twitter at Armalina and see what's going on. Cool. And I, I'm always on Twitch. I am DJ Pirate Rabbits here on Twitch. I stream my DJ streams every Wednesday night where we watch classic films while I uh, uh, 
play some sweet house tunes. And then uh, on Sunday mornings, I do a little brunch set, usually about an hour, hour and a half, just kind of get your weekend uh, finished up there. So uh, once again, thank you so much, Teos, for joining us. Uh, yeah. You know, Sean, <laughs> thank you for joining us too, even though you had to leave a little early, but that's okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the show. So yeah. thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful Gen Con weekend out there. You guys are rad. And what is the... Oh, we did forget the most important thing. Oh, my thing. gosh. Adventure uh, yet to be named. Oh, before we go. I, I love that it's named after Discordia. I'm so... That's so exciting. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, dis- gosh, what are we going to do? Uh, apples, poisoned apples, rotting vines. Mm-hmm. An apple a day. Um, <laughs> Whose cider are you on? Oh, oh no, that's even better. <laughs> Done. Uh, I was trying to go with some mulled cider or something, but that's good. Whose cider are you on? Cider you oh, on? It's gonna be E, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. And with that, thank you, audience. Thank you, Gen Con. Thank you, Saving Throw. And we will see you next time. And remember to keep your crock pots on simmer. <laughs>